Now I want to verify that the set of fractional linear transformations forms a group. Now this group is uh, very important in mathematics. It has a various range of applications, most notably in hyperbolic geometry and number theory. In fact, it even plays a role in the famous uh, proof of Andrew Wiles in 1993 of uh, the last theorem of Fermat. So, but it, there are also applications to engineering and very, very other areas of mathematics and also outside mathematics. So the set of fractional linear transformations is described as this set here of functions f from the set of complex number to itself having the following form where uh, a, b, c and d are integers satisfying this uh, property here. So let me, let me give a name to the set for simplicity, let me call it f. So here we want to verify that this set under composition of functions form, forms a group. And possibly we want to do this in the least painful way. So the first thing I would do by looking at this expression is to take two functions of this uh, form, namely, let's say, f1, a1z plus b1, c1z plus d1, and f2. Similarly, and now compose them to see whether we get a function that has to be of this form as f because in the end it has to be in the group so we compute let's say f2 composed with f1 of z now this by definition of f2 is f2 of f1 over z plus b2 over c2 of f1 of z plus d2. Now, of course, here I will substitute for f1 this expression. And in the end, uh, well, my goal, after maybe some elementary uh, computations, algebraic manipulations, is to express this, uh, this fraction here in the form that I want, namely of something that multiplies z plus something over something like this. Now I will let you verify these elementary computations by yourself and uh, realize that what you get in the end is something that looks like this. Now, so this already shows that the set, this set f under mm, composition of functions is, is closed. So namely that I compose two functions in the set, I remain inside this set. And this is good news. And of course from here on we could proceed to show that this is a group by verifying all of the axioms of a group. So a very direct uh, way to approach this, uh, this exercise. However, this might be a bit painful because as you see here, the computations are a bit tricky. So to, for example, verify associativity might take uh, a bit long. So I want to take a shortcut and the shortcut is based on the observation that these elements here these uh, coefficients in the expression for the composition are somehow remind us of a product of matrices. Namely, let's take matrix with these coefficients A2, B2, C2, D2, multiplied by the matrix A1, B1, C1, C1, 
Now, you see that the first element, so the first line, first row element of the product, namely this row here multiplied by this column, is precisely a2, a1 plus b2, c1. And here you see it's the same coefficient appearing in this expression and similarly for all the other entries. So the clue that we get here is that the composition of two such functions correspond to the multiplication of two matrices of this form. Moreover, we realize that this condition, uh, AD minus BC equal to 1, translated into the, into the realm of matrices, means that the determinant of such a matrix is 1, is equal to 1. In particular, the matrix is in vertigo, which in the end is something that we really care about, since we want to prove that this F is a group. So let's now write down the corresponding group of matrices which we have in mind, and also give it a name. The, the matrices we want to study are therefore of the form AB, CD, so two by two matrices, where AB, C, and D are integers, and the determinant of the matrix is one, namely A, C minus D, C is equal to one. Now. This, as we know already, is a group under matrix multiplication, and its official name uh, is uh, PSL2, Projective Special Linear Group. And let me make some space here. Here one also write Z, because the coefficients here are in Z. There are also applications of this group to modular, what is called modular arithmetic, and for this reason, this is also often called a modular group. But now let's put the names apart and get go to our goal, which is to prove that F is a group. And this, we will, so we will take advantage of the fact that we already know that such group of matrices are actually groups and so here the simple verification that we have that we can do is to uh, show that there is a bijective correspondence between this group here and our set f and under this correspondence uh, the multiplication of two elements or say of two matrices here correspond to the composition of two functions in our set f and this would be enough to show that f then automatically inherits the structure of a group from this PSL2. So our correspondence is defined in the obvious way. Let's call it phi. Namely, we associate the matrix A, B, C, D to the functions F, the function F flat of the corresponding form. Now this application is clearly bijective. Of one one. Now we only need to verify that phi of the product of two such matrices A1, say, and A2, correspond to the phi of A1, oops, which will be a function that we call F1, composed with phi of A2. But this is precisely what we showed in the previous page, so this is okay. And our conclusion is that F is a group isomorphic to the modular group now as I mentioned before this group 
is uh, very important in, for many, many uh, areas in mathematics and outside. But in particular, its, uh, its study is also important in geometry and geometry of the plane. We can think of these transformations as transformations of the plane. And they have some nice and important properties. Well, first of all, it is uh, useful to um, think, to study uh, some special cases of this uh, transformation, namely, for example, uh, f given by f of z, z plus b, for example, and this would be called the translation. Since it would shift, it would translate all the points of the complex uh, plane, then there is another special uh, transformation of simple form, which is, say, just A times Z. And these are either dilation that you can imagine would expand the complex plane in uh, radially, um, if in the case that A is a real number, purely real number, or also rotations. In the case, for example, that A is a unitary uh, complex number. Finally, another special form for F is that given by 1 over Z. It is called inversion. And you can see uh, easily that the general form of a fractional linear transformation can be obtained by uh, a combination of these uh, special ones. And for example, an inversion would act on the complex plane by turning the inner disk of radius 1 inside out. So maybe it's a bit hard to explain this just by words, uh, but there is a very nice YouTube video that I put in the description uh, here below that illustrates with an animation that illustrates uh, how this, uh, this transformation act on the plane and how we can actually think of all these transformations as motions of the sphere above the plane. So I suggest you to take a look at this. Also a very nice geometric property of these uh, transformations as transformations of the plane is that they preserve circles, so they map circles into circles, even though one has to be a little bit careful what uh, one means with a circle. In fact, uh, it can also happen that a circle is mapped to a line and vice versa. But one uh, then solves this mathematically by saying that we define a generalized circle as being either a circle or a line. So one thinks of a line as a circle with infinite radius.